Welcome back to this Python series on the Django Web Framework and in this one we're going to take a look at what's called middleware in Django. So let's look at the settings.py so that I can sort of explain what I mean by middleware. So if we if we have a look through the settings file, and we scroll up a bit, I was at the bottom of the file there, uh, just underneath the installed apps by default there's this thing called middleware and there's this list of strings in Django and all this is is it's trying to refer to the built-in middleware classes in Django itself. So you, you can see that they're built into Django because it says Django dot then middleware or whatever it might be. Uh, this is just sort of the file path uh, that refers to the class itself. Where, where the class, the middleware class is located within Django essentially. So they're all in uh, the location specified. And what each of these do really just sort of relate to the basic administration of uh, web applications. So they're things that you have probably used in Django but not really thought about or needed to think about because they just, uh, they're just there for you and they just do what, do what they need to do and then you don't even really have to think about them. So for example, the common, the common middleware that is the only one that Django really strongly recommends that you always have by default because technically you could use Django without having this middleware defined uh, at least without having any of these uh, strings in the list at all but that's really highly not recommended because a lot of these do some quite important things like for example the common middleware which is really the first one you would have to have if you're building a very very simple application and you wanted to do it sort of from the ground up if you like the common middleware does things like uh, it'll append a slash to the end of the URL so if if I try to search a URL uh, like this so just forward slash account forward slash login and in our URLs we haven't got that defined because we've defined one with a slash but technically, the, for example, Google search engine and things like that, they will see the URLs as two distinctly different URLs, uh, one with a slash and one without. So the common middleware does things like it will append that slash if we try to find this URL, but it's not defined. So if we hit enter, we get that slash appended automatically for us. Uh, and that's just something that Django does by default, which is really, really cool, uh, because it means that we're being more consistent with their URLs. And so that's just an example of what middleware can do. And middleware, as the name suggests, runs sort of in between uh, the response, the request response cycle that you might be familiar with, so uh, between the client and the, ser the web server. Uh, so the client will make a request to a web server, then the server will send the information back to the client and you get a web page. The middleware is somewhere in between there. Uh, dealing with the uh, responses generally speaking and in this one we're going to sort of write our own custom middleware uh, or at least start writing that class and incorporate it into our Django project uh, to see sort of how you go about writing your own custom middleware. So I'm just going to create a new file and I'm going to do it in the main folder uh, for this project. I'm going to create a new file I'm just going to call it middleware. Now you can call this file anything you want Remember to add the .py extension so that it knows it's a Python file. And uh, I could call it anything I want, but I just need to remember that if I'm referring to it in the settings, I need to remember to make sure that I use a consistent name. So if I did something like... Uh, so, so the path that we would do is tutorial, because that is the folder that's in here, underneath the root, the root project folder and then we're going to do dot middleware. Now if I wanted to change the name of that file, say to something like login middleware to be more explicit, I would just have to change it here as well and I would say login middleware like that if that was the name of the file. But in this case I'm just going to call it middleware because I don't expect to have to define lots of custom middleware so I think that it would be okay to put it all in that middleware file. And now of course if I change my mind later and I want to split it out into separate files and rename them I would just uh, I, that would be perfectly acceptable but I just have to remember to change it in the settings where we define the middleware. Now this isn't complete because what we need to do also and you might guess from looking at the sort of examples above is we have to define the specific middleware class that we are going to sort of have defined in within that file. So I'm going to say something like login required 
uh, middleware. And now that's going to be that's going to have to be the name of the class that is going to be defined in that file because that's what we're referencing within the settings file. So let's define that class. I'm just going to go to the middleware.py file that we just created, and I'm going to say login required middleware. Now what this class is going to be is it's going to sort of deal with all those views instead of us putting the login required decorator on top of each view function. Uh, you know, we could take a look at that if we go to the views.py, we can see we use the login required decorator. And that works okay, but if you think about the situation where you have lots and lots of function based views, and you have to put it on every single one, not only is it sort of repeating code, you, you have this decorator all over your code base in all your views files, and that sort of looks a bit messy. But also, what if you forget to put it on a view which contains sensitive information? So, what's much better to do is have it automatically say, okay, well, I'm going to automatically assume that you want this login to be required, and then we're just going to put some URLs in the settings file so that if you want it to be not required at some point, then, you know, like for example, the login page or the register page, uh, they're the only two URLs that I can think of which would be exceptions at the moment, then we could do that and make them exceptions, but then otherwise just make sure every other view requires an authenticated user. So that's what our middleware is going to do. So with that said, let's go back to this middleware.py file and let's finish defining this class. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to import the uh, settings file so that we can reference the uh, login exempt URLs. So I'm going to say import django.conf, uh, sorry, this is wrong, <laughs> from django.conf import settings now you could also say something like import settings but there's uh, some slight differences between the two and basically uh, without going into too much detail the way that I'm doing it here is uh, going to be slightly better, it's going to import slightly more so that you can have, have access to referencing slightly more things but uh, without getting too complicated we'll just leave it at that so with that imported you could do something like settings dot and then you could reference anything you wanted to, say install laps for example, and then you'd refer to it like that, uh, any variable in the settings file. So now that we've done that, let's just say pass and let's see if this works at the moment. So the Django development server updates, but this is quite a common error with people trying to write their very first middleware class and they're really you know, get stuck, don't understand why, and it confused me as well when I first started to hear about middleware and first tried to start writing my own custom middleware classes, because a lot of beginner classes don't necessarily cover writing their own custom middleware, because it's not a necessarily a very beginner sort of thing. So the reason that we're getting this is because the init function, it actually is being passed uh, some parameter. So we have to define init, so remember this is a built-in method in Python that we're overriding here, and we're going to say self, because all methods in a class take self by convention, and I'm just going to say get response, response, just like that, and then I'll just say pass here. And now the development server is working again, there's no errors, which means that it just required us to take this variable, um, whatever it might be, this name is sort of arbitrary, you could call it whatever you want technically, but I'm just going to do print uh, get response, and then we can see what the value is in that. So it's a get response function that is being passed to this middleware class uh, that we can do with what we want. So that's not the only thing that is being passed with the middleware classes, but we're going to get to that when we do things like define or rather override a another another method in order for us to do some really cool stuff with handling that login authentication stuff before the view, the Django view is actually loaded. Uh, we'll do that in the next video.